Janome. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess with So Many Creations. Today's video is a super quick and easy fun project and it's making these little trays. You can make them in a set and nest them. You can make them tiny, you can make them big, you can make them out of cork or fabric. Pretty much the sky's the limit on this one. So I'm gonna go over the materials in just a minute. You'll just need a few of your basic sewing supplies. And for today, I'm going to do some embroidery like I did on this one using my Janome Skyline S9. You don't have to have an embroidery machine for this project, but if you have one and want to use it, it's a fun place to add a little personal touch. Maybe for the person you're gifting it to, or in this case, I'm gifting this to me and I put my initial in it. These are super quick, easy, and you'll be able to get a bunch of them done in no time. Perfect for the holidays, which are right around the corner. If you like videos like this, go ahead and click subscribe. You can also give it a thumbs up and click the little notification bell to know when I upload. So let's get into it. Before we go over all of the supplies that I have laid out for today's project, I wanted to show you the two versions a little bit closer up. So let's start with this one right here. This tray is made out of cork. So I have a mustard color for the inside and an aqua on the outside. I didn't do any embroidery on this one, but you absolutely can embroider on cork. I've done that in a few other videos as well if you wanna check those out. And for this version, you're going to be placing two pieces wrong sides together and you're gonna sew them without finishing the edges. So you can see here that these are all raw edges along the top. So for this version, you wanna make sure you're using something that is not cotton. You don't want it to fray. So you can use cork like I did. You could use vinyl or leather scraps. You could even use craft tacks. You can even just use one piece like I did right here. So for this one, I actually only used one piece of cork and I'm using the backing of it for the inside. I'll be honest, it's not my favorite, but in a pinch, if I wanted to make something super, super quick, I could do that. So what I've done for this one is just cut my two pieces the same size, again, placed them wrong sides together and sewed around the edge. We're going to do some extra steps for today's video, which is including um, cotton fabric and embroidery. Again, you can skip the embroidery if you don't want to or if you don't have an embroidery machine. And for the cotton, you wanna make sure that you have finished edges. Cotton is going to fray and we don't wanna have our you know, trays looking kind of messy after a while. You don't wanna have raw edges here. So that's the only difference. So all of the steps that I'm going to show you for this project right here, you're just going to um, cut a few of those out if you're doing something like cork or something that's non-fraying. And I'll go over that as we do each of the steps just to make sure that you know how to complete that. I figured since the fabric has a few extra steps, we would do that version for today. I'm going to pick my embroidery design in just a minute, but I wanted to go over with you all of the supplies that I have here. There's not too many. You really don't need a whole lot to make this project, but let's take a look. So again, basic sewing supplies, you'll need your machine, and we're gonna go over feet, needles, and thread in just a minute. I use my rotary cutter and my ruler to cut my squares. So I have those right here. I also have scissors and I keep a small ruler around, that's going to be really great for your corners right here where you're marking and measuring those. So to measure, I use my small ruler and to mark, I use something like this. This is a chalk pencil. This one happens to be green. Anything that's going to come off, otherwise you wanna make sure that you're sewing right on top of that line. So you could use a pencil or anything that's removable. I probably wouldn't use a pen in this case like I do in a lot of my other videos, but just not for this one. So I have here my turning tool. When I'm turning the fabric pieces right side out, I wanna get nice crisp corners. And so I like to use this tool right here. There's also a stiletto, which is helpful, and a seam ripper, because if I'm sewing, I'm probably going to have seams to rip out. I don't know about you, but I usually can't get through a project without undoing something. So I have that right nearby. For my pressing, I like to use a pressing clapper. This is not necessary, but I do like to have this around because I think it helps to fuse my interfacing and to really make uh, my edges nice and clean. So I use this when I'm doing my ironing. I always have pins and clips around. Both of these are helpful for this project. If you're doing cork, you wanna stick with just the clips, um, but I will use the pins to do some of my marking for today on my fabric. 
And let's go ahead and go over some of these items right here. These are always the big ticket questions that people have. What kind of needle do I need? What kind of thread do I like? And what kind of feet am I going to use? So if I am making a cork project, I prefer a Microtex or a Top Stitch 9014. Those are my favorite needles to use for cork. They're great for piecing as well as top stitching. And I make a lot of bags, so I always have these on hand. My machine loves it, the cork loves it, so these are my absolute favorite. But for today, since I'm using fabric, I'm just going to be using a standard uh, universal needle, and this is an 8012. This is fine for my embroidery for today as well as for piecing. As far as thread is concerned, I like to embroider and piece in cotton. I use cotton pretty much exclusively. Every so often, and it's mostly because it's the right color, I will throw in a polyester. Personal preference, I just don't love the shininess of polyester thread. I really like cotton, and Aurifil is the one that I prefer to use. Whatever you have that you like is totally fine. I know a lot of you have a vast collection for your embroidery machine and that is fine. I use the same thread for my piecing and my embroidery. Since I'm embroidering, I do have some 50 weight, which is the orange cone. Those are totally fine to use. I also have some 40 weight. If I am making this out of cork, it is fine that I embroider in the 50, but I, I like to piece in the 40 weight. That's the green one. Sometimes in bag making, I'll even go up to a 28, but these are the two that I'm gonna be using for today, mostly because I need to pick the right colors and I have a mix of both. So I will be using both of those. And as far as my feet are concerned, you might be looking and thinking, that is a lot of feet for one small project, but I'm gonna show you why I have all of these. So first of all, I have my P foot for my embroidery. If you are not embroidering, you won't need this foot. This is the one that I'm going to use first. I also use a quarter inch foot. This is my O foot. This has a guide on the side, that's my preference. Whatever you piece with and get your accurate quarter inch seam, that's the foot that you're going to wanna to use. When we're piecing this together, this top seam right here, we're doing a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If you are doing the cork, you really don't need the quarter inch foot because you're just going to be doing a little bit of eighth inch top stitching. For my eighth inch, I like to use my G foot. This is a blind hem foot. You see it has a little guide in the middle there. I don't know if you can see that. I use my blind hem foot as my top stitch foot. I often call it my handle foot because I do all of my bag handles using this foot. And as you can see right here, and I'll show you how I use this when we get to it, I move my needle over to the left and I do my top stitching right there with this foot. I did the same thing with my fabric option. So I like to have this around. If you don't have this foot or if you have another one that you like to do a narrow top stitch with, you can use that. This is my personal favorite. And I also have with me my F2 foot. This is a clear foot. It's the open toe. This I use for these lines right here to make the corners. I don't need to have this foot. I can do this with my quarter of an inch, but I like that I can see a little bit better and I prefer to use that. So I would say at the bare minimum, you will want your O foot, you'll want your G foot, and again, if you're embroidering, you'll want your P foot, and you can throw in an F2 if you prefer. I'm gonna show you how to use all these feet while I'm doing the sewing steps. So let's get into the fabric that I have here. For today, I'm going to be using this cotton canvas for the outside. So this is a little bit heavier than your standard quilter's cotton like I have here for the inside, but it's not super heavy. This is not like a duck cloth. It's not that type of canvas, just a regular cotton. I've already gone ahead and interfaced this. This is the Decor Bond 809. That's my preference. You can also use Decoville Light, which is 525. Either of those would be fine. Or if you have some other interfacing on hand that you like, you can do that too. As long as your machine can handle it, that is fine. I would just suggest that you don't go super, super light because when you're done, you want to have a little bit of body and substance to your tray. You don't want it to be really flimsy and fall over. This one right here has two layers of decor bond. I have it on my outside fabric and I do have it on my embroidered piece as well. I do that after I do the embroidery. So I've gone ahead and made my outside, got my interfacing on there, and I cut another square for the lining. The squares that I'm using today are nine inches. It's just a size that I picked and it worked with the scraps that I had around. Um, what I wanted to show you too is that these both started with eight inch squares. 
This one is smaller because of the seam allowance. This one is going to look a little bit bigger because there's no seam allowance. I would just recommend whatever size square you use that you don't go smaller than five inches. And that's noted in your um, handout, your little one page download. This is a five inch square. This is how small it is. And I don't think you'd wanna go any smaller than that because I don't know what you would store in that tiny little basket. So five inches is kind of my minimum, but really you can go with any size that you want. You can even make the corners taller if you want. You can really experiment and play around with whatever you have on hand. So again, for today, I'm doing nine inches. So I have a nine inch fused piece of canvas for the outside and I will have my nine inch square for the inside, but first I need to do my embroidery. So what I've chosen here for the back is actually a medium weight tearaway stabilizer. That's what I'm gonna use for the embroidery. And I just have a piece here of quilter's cotton. It is much larger than it needs to be. It's bigger than the finished nine inch square because I'm going to embroider. And if I'm being honest, I'm kind of a sloppy embroiderer. I'm not really good at centering and doing all that kind of stuff. So I just like to throw it in the hoop, get it on the machine and make something. So I've got my hoop right here. I am going to use the SQ14 hoop for today. So I've already taken those two pieces apart. And very simply here, since I have a piece of tearaway and I have a quilter's cotton, I'm just gonna lay them both on top, take my hoop and press that down. And once that's in place, I'll go ahead and tighten the screw down in the bottom corner. And then I just like to make sure that everything is in there nice and snug and I'm ready to go. So next I'm gonna head over to my sewing machine and I'm going to select my embroidery design and my threads and I'm gonna get started on that. So now it's time for the fun part. It's time to pick out my embroidery design and get my machine set up to embroider. I have my hoop already right here and I have my P foot on. I have a full bobbin. I'm ready to go. I just need to do a few things first. So first things first is I'm gonna open the carriage arm in the back here, pop that open, go to my machine mode and switch over to embroidery. Let it do some adjusting. And let's see what we're gonna use for today. I have no idea what I want. So I picked my design and I have my hoop all ready in place. Um, I found this really cute trick or treat black cat. Um, I don't even know if it goes with my outside fabric, but I'm doing it anyway because I am definitely in a fall mood and I think this is really cute. So I grabbed a few threads. It says that I need six colors. I may end up using a couple of them more than once, but I have my main colors right here. So I am ready to get started. And it looks like, let's see what my first one is. It will be the broom. So for the broom, I'm gonna go with this peachy color right here. I'm gonna get my machine all threaded and then let her rip. So one of my favorite features on all of my Janome machines is how easy they are to thread. And this one is no different, even though it doesn't have an automatic threader like my 15,000, that is okay because it threads really easily. So again, I'm using a 40 weight for this. I have some 40 and some 50 because that's what I have to work with today. And I'm fine with mixing both. They're both gonna work nicely on the fabric. And drop my foot here, get a big fuzzball out of the way, thread my needle, and just like that, I'm done. So first things first, I have my scissors nearby because I'm going to take a few stitches and I hold my thread loosely. And once it's taken a few stitches, I stop and I get in there and trim that thread. Make sure you trim the right one. I have many times trimmed the working thread, but now that that's all set, I'm gonna let this embroider and I'll be back to show you how it looks when it's done. All right, the embroidery is all done. And I think this might be the cutest embroidery I've ever done. There. So I'm going to take this over to the ironing board so I can get this out of the hoop and also put on my interfacing. First, I'm going to put my machine back to regular sewing mode. So I'm just going to say okay, let it get back, and then put my carriage arm back in, change out my foot, and I will be ready to start sewing. First things first, I'm gonna take my embroidery design out of the hoop. I don't need this anymore. 
So I'm just gonna undo the screw right here and pop that out. And because I am using a tear away stabilizer, I'm gonna turn this over and I'm going to tear out as much as I possibly can. I trimmed up my fabric piece here and I have my decor bond and I just wanted to show you quickly how I adhere this and also how I use my pressing clapper to help for this step. So decor bond is fusible so I'm finding the shiny side, that's going to be the glue side and I'm going to put that right side up on my ironing board and then I'm going to put my fabric piece on top with the wrong side down. Just get that centered. I have my iron here ready to go and I have it on the highest setting that it goes on. I do have it on linen. I'm also going to turn the steam on. I turned it off so that it wouldn't be on the camera, but I'm gonna turn on the steam and I'm just gonna start in the center here and I'm just kind of working my way around. Now I'm not pushing really hard. I'm not trying to stretch my fabric out at all, but what I also like to do as I'm going around, let's say that I have a spot that I have a wrinkle that won't come out or that just doesn't want to stick, I take my pressing clapper and just kind of put some weight on it right there. Give it a few seconds. You can even move the clapper around. You can use it. I've got a little bit of wrinkling right here down at the bottom of the broom. So I'm just going to use the tip of my iron, warm that up, and then use my clapper. And you can put some pressure on it. You can kind of work it back and forth or work it in a circle and just like that it's adhered nicely now what's going to happen right here in the center where it's a little bit thicker and it has some of that stabilizer behind it you're just going to work slowly kind of around right here i'm trying to stay on the fabric as much as possible instead of on the back side because if i go to the back where the interfacing is the interfacing is a non-woven so it's not made from cotton which means it has a likely chance that it will uh, shrivel or wrinkle or pucker, and none of those things are what we want. So I'm working around as much as I can, getting this adhered, getting all these little wrinkles and puckers out, using my pressing clapper. I'm always keeping my iron moving. I don't hold my iron in a certain spot and count. I don't do any of that. I don't use a pressing cloth. You will see lots of different directions out there, but these are the things that I have found work. And what I find with any fusible, what it wants more than the temperature of your iron is it wants consistent pressure. So when you're using a pressing clapper, that's what's going to help to really um, let it cool um, a little bit slower and also to get some even pressure. And also when it's still warm, I don't pick it up. I leave this right here, let it cool a little bit. If I just immediately iron it and pick this piece right up, there's a chance that it's not going to adhere. So I just wanna be patient with it. Give it, a, you know, give it a few seconds. I'm getting around some of these little creases. I had a little bit of puckering from my embroidery. I am still a new embroiderer, so, you know, cut me a little bit of slack. I'm not a seasoned professional like a lot of you. I'm guessing that either my hoop was a little bit too tight or possibly it was too loose, but I'm guessing it was too tight because that's what I seem to do. And I'm guessing that I stretch my fabric out a little bit. If you have some tips and you would like to kindly leave them in the comments, I would be happy to hear them. Um, you know, no, no negativity needed here, but I'm always happy to hear how I can improve what I do. I know there's a few wrinkles around the embroidery, but I'm all right with it. I am going to turn this over and I'm just going to see right in here. I can tell, and you might not see this on camera, but I can tell that this hasn't stuck right in this spot because again, it's a little thicker with all the thread. So I'm just going to carefully, and this time I'm kind of scooting my iron back and forth. You see how that side popped up? It does want to wrinkle and it does want to kind of warp. So I'm just being really careful, just like that. The pressing clapper is everything. This is my smaller one. I also have a larger one. And I'm just taking my time with it. And once it's done, it looks a lot better. I have a few more wrinkles to address because you are going to get some wrinkling when you're on the backside. So I'm just taking my time here, using my clapper, smoothing out, because the better I do this now, the happier I will be in the end. Interfacing seems to be something that is a challenge for a lot of people, especially fusible. They have a very hard time getting it to stick. And what I have found is that the instructions that are given with the interfacing are kind of vague 
and they're covering their bases because they don't know what your skill level is when you're using it. So they're trying to give you really basic, um, simplified information that they feel is going to work. And I have to disagree. I don't like the way that the instructions are written. I find that I have better luck doing this. I also have a um, t-shirt press. So if I'm doing a lot of bag making or I'm doing larger pieces, I will use that. Now the t-shirt press doesn't have any steam. I do use steam in my iron because I just always do. But the t-shirt press is giving you that even consistent temperature and pressure across and it really helps to adhere it nicely. So you can see it's not peeling up at all. It's all ready to go. So now I can head back over and grab my other piece and I'll show you how to finish this up. We're gonna have a finished tray in no time. I finished my embroidery. I have my pieces um, interfaced. Again, I know that I do have some wrinkling around here. That is not because of the interfacing. It is because of the embroidery. Please be kind. I am still new to embroidery. I'm having a great time, but I am figuring things out just like a lot of you. You're welcome to leave a kind, polite comment to let me know what I can do to improve my embroidery skills. I am always happy to hear that. But in the meantime, I am happy. I am going forward because this is so stinking cute and I cannot wait. I love how, even though this is not a Halloween um, fabric, it's got that really cool fall look. It's got some of the oranges in here, just like I used. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these two together. So now that I have my two pieces, because I am using, again, cotton, I do have to finish my edges. So I'm going to need to put both of these pieces right sides together and sew all the way around using a quarter of an inch seam. I'm gonna go all the way around and I'm going to leave an opening. Now, when it comes to bag making, I think the bigger the opening, the better. When it comes to this one, I'm okay with leaving a smaller opening. So I'm probably going to sew and leave maybe a few inches. I just have to turn this tray through the opening. I don't have to turn a giant bag with hardware and zippers, really simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this prepared. When I stitch, I'm going to use my O, which is my quarter inch foot. I'm gonna make sure I back stitch when I start and stop, do my quarter inch all the way around. I'll come back over here and show you how I like to trim my corners before I turn. And before I go, I wanted to also show you, again, if you're using cork, you have your two cork pieces that are cut to the same size. These are five and a half inch squares. Um, again, it can be any size you want. I just grabbed some scraps to demo. And I would just be taking these and I would be placing these wrong sides together. So I have both of my cork, um, the right sides facing out where my fabric is right sides together. This is wrong sides. Now all I need to do with these two pieces is do an eighth of an inch top stitch using my G foot all the way around here and this one will be all set. So I'm gonna sew these two pieces since I'm at the machine and just to show you how this looks and then I will get this one prepared and I'll show you how I do a little bit of trimming before I do my final stitching. So my machine is back in regular sewing mode. I took my P foot off, I put the ankle back on and I have my O which is my quarter inch foot on here already. And I'm going to pick my quarter inch stitch which I'm going to pick from this menu right here down in the quilt menu and stitch number two. Now the preset is 1.8 for the stitch length, which is a little bit too small for me. I'm gonna bump this up to 2.5. If I was stitching my cork together, I would probably use about a three. I like to go a little bit bigger with cork. I did not bother to clip or pin my pieces together um, just because I didn't feel like it, but you absolutely can. I'm gonna put my needle in the down position, get some fuzz out of here and go. I'm just gonna take a few back stitches and I'm leaving an opening. I also want my automatic foot option on so when I get to the corner it will lift up for me. And I do like to take a couple extra stitches in the corner. I just did a little bit of a back stitch. It just makes the corners a little bit crisper and I'm gonna show you how I trim them. All right, I'm all done stitching. I did leave an opening. <clears throat> it doesn't really matter where you leave the opening. I just picked the bottom. It's that bag maker in me that just always goes towards the bottom of a project for really no reason. So I'm just gonna trim my thread here. And I'm gonna take this over to the cutting table and I'm going to do my trimming on the corners. I'll show you what I like to do to make this turn easier. But since I'm here, I'm going to switch my foot out to my G foot right here. And I'm going to show you what stitch I like to use for sewing the cork together. Now the cork again is wrong sides together because this does not need to have a finished edge. 
So what I'm going to do here is go back to my regular stitches. I'm gonna to go to number four, which is moving my needle all the way to the left. It's set at 0.5, I could go all the way to zero, but I'm gonna leave it at 0.5, I'm okay with that. My stitch length is 2.4, which is not bad, but since this is cork, I am gonna bump up to three. Plus, whenever I'm using this foot, I'm typically top stitching anyway, so I definitely would increase my stitch length. I am not even changing the thread, the top and the bobbin, I'm just kind of letting this be whatever it is, and I can start wherever I want. So I'm lining up on the left-hand side, I'm bumping up against that center guide right here, and drop my foot, take a couple stitches, back stitch, and I'm just gonna sew all the way around using this foot, I love this foot. This blind hem foot is everything. When you are a bag maker, it makes your handles so much better. It's great for top stitching. So my cork shifted a tiny little bit because I didn't clip it together, but when I get back over to the cutting mat, I will trim that up a little bit. I'll just trim my threads here. Now I'm gonna head back over there and show you how to finish this up. So I have my two pieces here. I have a pair of scissors so I can do a little bit of trimming. And on the cork piece, this shifted just a tiny little bit. I didn't clip it together. So what I'm gonna do is on this little edge right here, and it's really minor, is I'm just gonna trim it. I'm just going to take that little bit that was sticking up. I knew that it was, and I was following the gray, so I'm okay with just doing that little bit of a trim. And if I have to, I can trim the other side, but a lot of times when it's all done, you won't even notice. This side moved over, so I'm just gonna do that too. And just like that, easy peasy. I'm gonna set this aside. So for the fabric option, before I turn this right side out, I'm gonna trim in the corners. And I like to trim a, a diagonal, just like that, kind of a 45 degree angle. I'm not right up against the, the stitching. I don't want to accidentally cut my stitches or poke through them when I'm turning. And I'm just gonna do that there. And here is another little thing that you can do if you want. We've done a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If you want to, you can also go in and just take a little bit. I'm not even taking half, maybe about a third. And just trimming that little tiny bit, it's not gonna hurt anything, but it will make those seams lay a little bit flatter. And I'll do that on these three sides. You can do this with your rotary cutter too, if you would prefer. And over here, I like to leave this. I don't wanna trim this area here because I'm gonna tuck that under in just a second. So what I'll do is I'll just take a little bit, kind of like that, and a little bit here. And I'm gonna take this to the ironing board and I'm gonna give it a good press. First, I'm gonna turn and when I'm turning, I just try to be gentle. I don't wanna rip any of the stitches out. And I'm trying not to wrinkle it incredibly too much, but of course, it's a small opening, it's gonna happen. So I'm just going to very slowly turn that so I don't hurt anything. I get that turn right side out, and then it looks like this. And I'm gonna take my index finger and my thumb, and I'm just gonna grab each of those corners and just kind of pull them as best as I can. And then I will use my turning tool to get those corners nice and crisp, just like that. So I'm gonna take my turning tool and I take this end right here and I'm just kind of smoothing the edge and poking the corner as best as I can. Cutting that little diagonal I think makes it much nicer, much more crisp. So I just push that out, do the same over here and here. So take this over, I'll give it one more press, and I'm going to take these edges right here and tuck them under, just like that. I'll show you over here. Just tuck them in, make that nice and straight. I'm gonna give this a press, add a couple pins here if I need to, and I will be ready for top stitching. Okay, I turned, I pressed, I got this all um, nice and smooth. This is my open edge right here. I did use the stiletto, which is part of my turning tool, to kind of push those edges under, give them a good press. I actually don't need any pins. Sometimes I pin, sometimes I don't. Now that this is ready, I'm going to top stitch it just like I did to the cork piece, and then I will show you how to make your corners so that it stands up on its own. 
My machine is set up with a matching thread in the top as well as the bobbin. I wanted to make sure I did that before I completed my project here. I didn't change it when I was doing the cork um, just because it was a demo. But this one I'm going to complete and I want to make sure it looks perfect. So I have the orange in the top and the bobbin. I also still have my G foot on and I'm using stitch number four. So my needle position is at 0.5. So it's over here to the left, almost all the way to the left. I could go to zero if I wanted to. And my stitch length is at three, which is totally fine for top stitching. So I'm just going to top stitch around and typically I don't like to start on a corner. It's just a personal thing. So I'm just gonna start a little bit off just holding my thread tails for just a second. Take a couple stitches and back stitch. And I'm just going to top stitch all the way around. And here is a question or um, a possible design choice. When you get to your corners, if they have a little bit of an angle, do you make one angled stitch like I just did? Or do you go all the way into the corner and have a, a totally straight stitch? I'm just curious. I'm gonna do one little angled stitch in each corner, just like that. Yes, my machine does not think I have enough bobbin. It might be right. I guess we will find out. Make sure I back stitch and I'm all done. All right, let's go back to cutting. So I top stitched, I top stitched all the way around. I did the eighth of an inch using the G foot. And by doing that, I went right over the opening right here. And because that was a quarter inch seam and I used an eighth inch top stitch, I don't have an opening here. I've closed it and also done my finishing um, top stitching. So now both of my pieces look alike. My fabric has finished edges and my cork does not. The finishing steps are going to be the same for either one. So I'm going to set this one aside. I'm not going to bother finishing this one for today. I'm just going to finish up this little guy. So the first thing that I'm going to do is grab my ruler and I'm going to use my smaller ruler and my marking tool. Again, I want something that's erasable. So I'm using this green and I'm actually going to turn this over and I'm going to mark it on this side because this is going to be the outside. So when I fold those edges up, that's really where I need to see the markings, not on the inside. So I'm going to use my ruler and for this one right here, I did an inch and a half. I'm going to do an inch on this one. I want to make sure that my embroidery design really shows through. So what I'm going to do is on each corner, I'm marking in from the side as well as uh, from each side, I'm marking in an inch. So I'm just laying my ruler there and I'm just making some little marks right here, just like that. If you cannot see them on camera, or just to make sure that you can, I'll use some pins. You can also do it this way as well. If it's easier, you can just take a pin and put one pin there and one pin there, just like that. However you need to mark it. I'm just going to finish up and use pins instead. That way you guys can see it. If I was doing this off camera, I would just be using my marking tool. So just, we need to know where these corners are gonna line up. All right. So there's my last one. So now I have all of my corners marked. So what I'm gonna do is turn this over again so that it's right side up. And I'm going to pinch this corner at an angle. So I'm meeting these pins together and kind of just pinching that so I get a little bit of a point. This is when I like to use my clips. And if you would prefer to do these one at a time, you can do that, or you could do all of them at the same time. And that's how your corner is gonna look. You're basically folding your piece diagonally for each corner. So again, I'm going to fold this in half like that. I'm folding it diagonally, lining up my pins, putting a clip right there. Diagonally, making a nice point. Grab a couple more clips and clip, and one more time. And the good thing about doing this now, if you clip all of your edges and have them all marked, you can kind of get an idea of how your piece is gonna look. Obviously, it's a little tighter because my clips are placed inward, 
but I can see, is that what I want? Do I want to go a little bit less? Do I want to go a little bit more? And then kind of play around. I think that once these clips are out of the way and this is finished, I think it's going to be perfect. So before I take this to my sewing machine, I can easily just wing this, but I would actually rather draw my lines. So I'm just going to fold my piece on each corner. Again, I'm using my ruler here and I'm making sure that the ruler is lined up on that top edge, making it nice and straight. And I'm going to draw a line with my chalk pencil so I know where to sew. So now that I have that done, I can sew right on that line instead of trying to eyeball it and maybe not being perfect. Sometimes I can sew a straight line and other days I can't, so why chance it? So on each side, I'm just gonna mark one. You don't have to mark both sides of the fabric. right up against the pin, making sure that's 90 degrees right there, and mark. So I'm gonna take this to the machine and sew each of these. Make sure you backstitch at the bottom as well as the top, and then this will be all set. So I'm gonna pop on my F2 foot. I'm gonna go back to a center stitch. I'm gonna keep my stitch length at three. Because it's a little bit thicker through here, I like that, um, that longer stitch length. And I've already taken the pins out on this side, so I'll take my clip off and drop my foot. I know. Okay. And make sure I backstitch. Now, if your top, top edge right here, that seam is thick and your machine's giving you a hard time with going over that, you can always stop a little bit shy. You can just um, sew right to your top stitch and you don't have to go up and over that. Do the best that you can, and if that's a problem, you can also mark on the other side and sew from the bottom to the top. It all kind of depends on what side I marked on. In this case, I'm sewing from the top down. If that's not working, I'll go remeasure and I will sew from the bottom up. I am all done for now. I'm done with my sewing, so I'm just gonna trim all these little threads. I just have a couple little things to do and then it's complete. First thing I need to do is decide if I wanna do anything with these corners. And what I mean is you can let them kind of just hang out or you can tuck them in and sew them, you can rivet them. There's a bunch of different things that you can do. And I also am going to take this to my iron and I'm gonna fold each of these sides and crease them. So I think I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna do that first and then I'll decide on my corners. I'll be right back. Okay, that's much better. So I just took this over to the ironing board and I just folded each of these edges inward and I pressed and I missed a bunch of thread tails. I'll take care of those. Thread tails drive me crazy. Okay, done. So now the last thing I have to do before I can use it is decide what I wanna do with the corners. So for these two that I showed you earlier, I left the corners. I think it's kind of cute. I like it that way and that's how I normally leave it. But you do have a few options. On this one, what I did is I just folded each one kind of like going in a circle around and I top stitch right over that. You can do that if you would like. For this one, because it was cork, I actually trimmed them, which you can do if you have something non-fraying. For these, because it is fabric, I can only sew them down or I can rivet them, but I don't want to cut them. So one of the other options that I've done in the past is kind of flattening this corner out like that. So you kind of just flatten it and you can add a few stitches or a little rivet right there if you want to do that. For now, I think I'm just going to leave them and I can always make that decision later if I decide I don't like it. But I think I'm done. I really love how this came out. It is so cute. I am ready for fall now. So I'm gonna take my trays and go fill them up with things. I've got a couple of my embroidered ones here. I've got my cork trays. I have all of these options and all I need are a few scraps to make some more. I hope you enjoyed this video. I cannot wait to see how your trays come out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and click the little notification bell. You can also follow me on social media. I'm pretty easy to find. I'm so many creations and I hope you enjoy this video. Have a great day.